So there's more than one way to applique. That's right, there sure is. So welcome to the Quilt As You Go Chronicles. Over the course of the next 10 episodes, we will be making a Quilt As You Go applique quilt called I Valentine based on love and sisterhood. That's right. So each week there's going to be a beautiful new applique design designed by my talented daughter, Alora. <laughs> and the exciting thing about this course is we're going to let you choose your favorite way to applique. That's exactly right. So if you'd like to make this quilt with us in our beautiful international community, all you need to do is watch the videos. They're all going to be free on YouTube and then head to our website and purchase the course notes and applique patterns. And then from there, you can share your work on social media. And if you're not interested in making this quilt, please stick around. We're going to have so much information. We're going to delve into a few more things that we haven't done before in one of our series. We're going to be taking you on some cool adventures and we're going to chat a bit about the history of applique. You know, Mum, I was actually researching the other day about the history of applique, and yeah. applique has been used since ancient Egypt. Wow, and it's yeah. a vehicle for storytelling, for creating identity and meaning in one's life. And we will have some cute applique quilts that share a bit of behind the scenes of our family, right? That's right. So what we're actually planning is once you've chosen your applique stitch, you can stitch away with us while watching Pattern Pool TV. And we're going to talk about some really exciting, interesting things. And we'd love to hear all your comments and see what everybody else has got to say about applique. Love it. So what are we going to do today, Mum? So today we're just going to get you started by printing out your pattern sheets. We're going to transfer the design onto our top background fabric. Then from there, we're going to apply our applique shapes. And then we're going to talk about the different ways that you can stitch around the edge. Well, I might jump behind the camera. That's right. And we'll get started. Yep, let's get started. So step one is to cut out the background fabric. During this course, I'm going to be referring to the background fabric as the top fabric. That will avoid any confusion. So I have pre-washed and ironed all of my fabrics. And if you're a beginner, stick with me because we're going to cut out each section as we go. If you're an advanced quilter and you already know how to cut out, in the part one course notes, all of the instructions are there to cut out all of the pieces for the top, the backing and the batting everything except for the applique shapes. So let's get started with cutting out. So after I pre-washed and ironed my fabrics, I put them onto a roll just to keep it nice and neat during the course. So I have my fabric positioned with my opposite selvages together and the folded edge here, I'm going to align on this bottom line on my cutting mat, making sure that that's nice and straight. Now square off the edge. To do this, make sure that a line on your ruler is nice and level with the folded edge and also just double check that the lines on your cutting mat from this end and this end here are nice and level and aligned and then trim the edge. Now measure 13 and a half inches from the trimmed edge and make a mark in two places. Then all you have to do is connect those marks with your ruler and cut another straight line. So now rotate the piece, open it out. We're just going to square off one selvage first of all, and then measure across from the trimmed edge, 13 and a half inches, mark that in two places again, and then cut. That's going to give you one 13 and a half inch square. So repeat the process to cut another square. You're then going to have a little bit of fabric left over. So cut another 13 and a half inch square and we'll put that aside for part two. If your center crease is quite wrinkled, 
Give that a press before you cut your next square. So here are our two 13 and a half inch squares for part one. There's our third one that we're going to set aside for part two. Now all of our top pieces are cut one to two inches bigger than required. And that's to allow for some shrinkage during the applique and quilting process. So once we have applique and quilted our pieces, they will then be trimmed to size before we join the pieces together to make the complete quilt as you go quilt. So in this episode, we won't be cutting the batting and backing, and that's because we're just going to be focusing on the applique. So now it's time to print out the pattern sheets. Make sure that you tick the actual size box in the printing menu. the sizing is correct by measuring the one inch test box and reprint if necessary. Join the four pages of the design placement together on the broken line. To do this cut on all broken lines that are marked with the scissors and then line up the lines and hold together with tape. Now to transfer the design placement onto your top squares. Take one of the top background squares and fold it in half both vertically and horizontally. Finger crease to indicate the centre of the square. With the right side of the top square facing up, position the design placement sheet underneath, aligning the centre lines of the design with the centre creases of the fabric. Hold in place with pins. Now it's time to trace the design placement onto the top fabric and to do this I'm going to use my sew line marker. It's a ceramic marker. I use this in all of my videos and if you press lightly you can always rub it out or it will always wash out. And a bit of a tip is to always just trace slightly inside the marked lines to avoid any stray lines. Now if you can't see the design placement through your fabric you can hold it up to a window or use a light box but we've got a great tip from Connie Steele and that involves using a clear casserole dish. So Connie uses a clear casserole dish with a light underneath. I'm going to use the light on my mobile phone and just pop that underneath and then I can easily see the design through it. If you're going to do something like this at home, make sure you keep safety in mind and don't use a light underneath that's going to be hot. I find that my mobile phone light stays nice and cool. So go ahead and trace the design placement. And if you want to skip this step, stick around because I've got a little tip later on in the video. So there's my design placement traced onto my top fabric. I haven't traced it all so that I can leave a little bit to show my tip for not tracing soon. For the applique shapes, you're going to need some fusible wear, but we're using Steamer Seam Light 2, but there are many other brands out there. You can either trace the shapes onto the smooth side of the fusible web or print them directly onto printer-friendly fusible web sheets. Steamer Seam is a bit different to other brands because it has an extra paper backing, so print onto the gridded side. We found that we had to cut it to an A4 size, but if you use letter size paper, you shouldn't have to trim it. So printing onto fusible web will definitely save you some time, but you will have some pieces left over. So save all those little pieces for another project. So all of the shapes are labeled with a number and the color. So roughly cut them out a little bit bigger around the edge. Don't cut them out exactly on the line just yet.
Now iron the rough side onto the wrong side of the corresponding applique fabric. Use an applique mat because sometimes glue can squeeze out from under the paper backing and will leave black marks on your iron. Now cut out the shapes, cutting exactly on the marked line. Now it's time to apply the applique shapes to the top fabric and here's that tip plus another tip. So first of all, sometimes it's really difficult to remove the fusible web from the back of the pieces. So what you can do is score that with a pin and that breaks the fusible web backing sheet and you can easily peel away the backing paper. Now the next tip is if you don't want to trace and you can see your design placement through your fabric, you can easily just position that in place. Now we're using steamer seam light, so when we peel away the paper backing, our pieces are tacky, so I know that that's going to stay in place before I iron it. But if you are using a fusible web that is not tacky, just use a glue pen. So we're using, um, I'll use my Soline glue pen, but if you have a glue that is water soluble and non-toxic, you can just put a few dabs onto the back of that so that you can position it in place before you slide it over to the iron to press it in place. So continue positioning the applique shapes onto the top fabric, using the numbers as a guide and ironing them as you go. And here's our applique all ready to stitch. I absolutely love this design. I hope you love it too. It's another beautiful design designed by Alora. Okay, so let's chat about stitching now. Okay, so the first one that I recommend is blanket stitching. This is a stitch that is used quite a lot in machine applique. Mm -hmm. I've used this on my pretty beach quilt, so you'll be able to see that with this quilt, I've used some threads that are a little bit darker than the applique fabric, just so that they stand out a little bit more. And in my sample, Block, you'll see that I'm using a dark gray thread and I'm going to use that on all of the pieces and that will define all of the shapes so it's kind of up to you how you want to go with colors on that one yep. and so not everyone has a blanket stitch on their machine so what is another great stitch well I like to use a small little zigzag so just like what we've used on our Twilight Dreaming quilt mm -hmm. so it's not quite a satin stitch because I find that sometimes that can bunch up a little bit so it's sort of like a small 
zigzag it's a little bit open and with that one there I recommend using threads that match the applique fabric or are just a little bit darker mm -hmm. but um, that's quite a nice stitch yeah so if you don't have a blanket stitch on your machine definitely use that little zigzag we and as I said that's what we used on our Twilight Dreaming Quilt and you really liked that stitch I really I she do likes like that yeah stitch. I do I think it's just a really pretty stitch mm. it's a bit more I don't know forgiving no it's not really yeah. <laughs> oh da, da. what about a hand sewing one okay so you could blanket stitch by hand mm -hmm. if you want to um I wouldn't do needle turn because I think some of the pieces are too small for that. But if you are a really clever needle turner, go for it by all means. Needle turner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Is that the right way? So. I know. Sounds good. Needle turner. Why not? Okay. <laughs> have you have you done a quilt? by hand before I did I know you haven't yes I have, have so, you? yeah so you know <laughs> it's a quilt that I made oh in two, in the year 2000 because it's got a label on it oh, and wow. it's called country by the seaside and I made this quilt yeah oh, you know you love it I love this so quilt. I made this when my children were little and it was hanging on the room um, on the wall in our family room and um, so yeah it's got all sea creatures and it's just a really fun fun quilt but this is a little bit um, about you know how quilting and application it can be passed on from generations because when I was getting my quilt samples out today I was looking at this quilt and I was remembering how much Laura and Ben <laughs> really love this quilt and I'm thinking one day if I get grandchildren <laughs> <laughs> they could have this on their wall but then I thought oh no who's going to get it Laura or Ben <laughs> we have to fight to the death I know that's exactly that's right right I think that it will have some like really beautiful childhood memories yeah, it for definitely you and, does. Um, my future grandchildren. <laughs> no pressure or anything. <laughs> and so we actually have done a deep dive on all these stitches in our last series called we Island did. Home. Yeah. And so we recommend you checking out that rather than repeating our content before because yeah. a lot of you have already seen that video. But if you want to take a deep dive into fusible raw edge applique, and we even test some fusible webbings and we things do. like that. So Yeah, we do. Yeah. We go right into it, um, the kind of needle, the machine foot that you need to use, um, close-ups on how to actually stitch it, mm -hmm. um, where to put the needle. Yeah. So, yeah, so... Please check it out. Yep, yeah, definitely. And it'll also that give out. you a little bit of an idea of how this series is going to be. A little bit of fun, a little bit of scenery, some, you know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And yeah. so let's talk about what we're going to do and what some of our more advanced quilters or anyone that's feeling brave wants to do. That's Share with right. us. Okay. So my favorite way to applique is sketchy applique. And I was saying to Laura, no, let's not put it in the course because not everybody likes it. And she was like, come on, do it, do it. So Please do it, Mom. She's talked me into it. So we're going to include sketchy applique as one of the techniques that you can use. So Yay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so sketchy applique is when you are free motion quilting and appliqueing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So with our other stitches, you will just do that on a single layer. But when you do sketchy applique, you do that with the top, the batting and the backing. And you use the needle as a pencil. And so you sketch in the outline, say three or four times, and then come back and sketch in the detail. So you're basically appliquing and quilting at the same time. It's really amazing because you never know where learning a new technique can take you. So let's just yes. chat about one of our Facebook group admins. We've got two. We've got Jackie Kennedy and Marcia Moon, yeah. two beautiful ladies helping out with our Facebook group. Yeah. And so they started on the pattern pool journey with us. And Marcia got very into thread painting. Painting, never did. trying it before and now look at the works of art that she creates and it just goes to show you that you never know where something can take you That's so right. learning a new technique yep. could be a new passion you exactly yeah. and to prove that all to you I'm going to try a sketchy applique next week as well fantastic that's gonna be a little bit of fun <laughs> I'm probably yeah. going to regret saying this <laughs> but I'll do it for you guys I've, I've never done it I came up with a hack in yeah. one of our applique courses a couple of years ago on how to do it so we can show you that hack as well yeah which is not free motion at all no but yeah i haven't tried free motion sewing so i'm gonna do it so you're gonna do it yep yeah and that's... i hope that inspires any of you to do it that's right <laughs> so now if you're going to blanket stitch or if you're going to zigzag watch our deep dive into fusible raw edge applique video and then you'll know how to do your stitching all the information is in the course notes too. Mm -hmm. And if you do want to do sketchy applique, we've got a video that you can watch. Yep. So um, we'll put the list 
you know, in our, in the, what do they call it? In the, the description, description. <laughs> also in the course notes. So watch that. But if you are going to sketch applique, all you need to do is just put your pieces onto the top fabric, your applique shapes, have it ready for next week. Cause next week I'm going to do a demo on sketchy applique, how you would sketchy applique these blocks. And then for those, our blanket stitches and our zigzaggers, our B's and our Z's, our B's and our Z's, we're going to show how to quilt the blocks with a walking foot so there's something for everyone we're working at all skill levels so we're really excited about that we're excited to see what everybody comes up with we can't wait so thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next episode that's right thanks for watching everyone bye, bye.